Welcome to Woodvale. My name is Braylon and I'm so glad you're joining us for today's service. If you're a first time guest, I'd like to take a moment to welcome you to Woodvale. Please visit our website and fill out a connect card. We would love to have an opportunity to connect with you and get to know you. If you're here on site with us today, drop by one of the guest tables in the lobby after the service. There's a group of hosts there who are excited to meet you and answer any questions you have. Our hosts have a gift card waiting for you to a coffee shop and we will be making a donation to Chio on your behalf, just as a way of saying thanks for being with us today. As we begin our time together today, I'd like to invite you to stand to your feet and join us now in a time of worship. Come on, let's worship church. As I confess, I find perfection. You're in the best and worst days of this life. You were always on my side. You're in the pain, you're in the promise. And on the days the furnace finds my face, you're the fourth within the flames. Come on, I don't need to know. I don't need to know what the future says Cause if the past could talk, it would tell me this That my God isn't finished yet If He did it before, He can do it again So I'll trust Him in what comes next For the God I know is known for faithfulness Yeah, my hindsight says I can trust Him with what's next There's more ahead than what's behind me. Just through the highs and lows and in between. God, you go ahead of me. Where you call me, I will follow. If the water folds beneath my feet, there you pull me from the deep. Says, Cause if the past could talk, it would tell me this My God isn't finished yet If He did it before, He can do it again So I'll trust Him with what comes next For the God I know is known for faithfulness And my hindsight says I can trust Him with what's next sing that my God isn't finished yet come on if he did it before he can do it again so I trust him with what comes next cause my heart says I can count on this my God isn't finished yet if he did it before he can do it again so I trust him with what comes next for my heart This morning, if he's done it before, he can do it again. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We serve a faithful God. Amen, church. Father, you truly are faithful, Lord. And God, we praise you this morning. Church, we're going to teach you guys a new song. 
And uh, I'm, ex- I'm excited about this song, I'm going to be honest. Um, I don't know if it's just me maybe getting older or maybe the pandemic we're living in. I just find myself so much more aware of eternity, um, just longing for heaven, um, longing for heaven on earth, and, uh, and excited for the day I get to go home and, and spend my time with Jesus worshiping him. And this song we're going to teach you guys is... Um, it just paints a beautiful picture of heaven. It really does. And just the singing and the rejoicing and the prodigals that have come home. And um, it's just a good reminder of the song of all that Christ has done for us, how he's paid for our sins, what he's done for us on the cross, and then a reminder of what it's going to be like one day in heaven. And I pray that the song just gets you excited about eternity I pray that it gets, exci- that gets, gets you excited just for, for more of heaven here on earth with us as well. So let's learn the song together.
The Father is welcoming. This is our homecoming. Scarlet says, Hell, the crimson cross. You nailed my death to that old cross. An empty slave at the empty grave. Thank God that stone was rolled. take every day, Lord, that we have. It's a gift from you to live, Lord, and to love, to share the love of Jesus with all those around us, God, and to give you the praise you, you deserve, Lord, every day, Father. Express how much we love you, Lord. Sing to you, Jesus. Oh, my words fall short 
I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end. But you never do. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know it's not much, I've nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. And I've got one response, I've got just one move with my arms stretched wide.
Come on, he's worthy. Amen, church. God, we give you all our praise. With everything that I am, Lord. We lift it up to you, Lord. We join in with heaven's soul. Shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Come on, all the earth. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. We sing great. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Amen, church. We pour out our praise this morning. We give God all the praise. Now, we have been as a church journeying over the past 21 days in fasting and prayer. What an incredible 21 days to be able to glorify God, focus the beginning of our year on Jesus. Amen. And today is the last day of our 21 days of fasting and prayer. And today's topic is church family. So I want to lead us in a prayer, praying for, for each one of us today. But could you do something? Could you just look around real quick? Don't move. Just look around. Look around the people in this place. What an encouraging sight it is to see so many people in the house of the Lord this morning. If you're watching online, we love you as well. And we, we just believe this is such an important moment to gather together as the church family. So can we, can we just pray this morning that God would do an incredible work? work in not only our church, but, but the city of Ottawa and every single church family across Canada and across the globe. Can we lift up the church this morning, our church family? Let's pray. God, we just thank you so much this morning. We just recognize that you are a holy, mighty, sovereign God. God, as Pastor Brad was talking about, we pour out our praise God, we, we recognize your greatness. And this morning, Father, we pray for our church family. This 21 days of fasting and prayer is not to do anything but to glorify the name of Jesus. And so today, God, we lift up your name. God, we say, would you be famous in our hearts? Would you be famous in this church? God, would you be famous in this church family, we pray. God, I just pray for those right now who aren't able to make it to church for whatever reason. God, maybe they're battling sickness. Maybe they're battling disease. God, we pray a miracle right now in Jesus' name. God, we pray for anybody going through situations that just doesn't allow them to be here. God, we just pray a divine miracle right now in Jesus' name. And God, we say, Father, this morning we want to glorify you, lift you up, and make sure that, God, you are the center of all. God, you are so good. You are so great. From the depths of our souls, we lift you high as the King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, Jesus. And everyone said, amen, amen, amen. Well, God bless you. You may grab a seat and turn your attention to the screen. 
Hey Woodville family, it is so great to be with you in church today. Today is the final day of our 21 days with Jesus. What an amazing 21 days we've had in prayer and fasting. And tonight we are wrapping it up together at All Church Prayer right here in the main auditorium at 6 p.m. I hope that you can join us on site or online for this prayer gathering. To join us on site, please be sure to register for this on our website. If you've been considering water baptism, join us Tuesday, January 25th for our water baptism class. We would love nothing more than to support you as you make this next step in your faith journey. Please be sure to register for this on our website. Men, we have a virtual breakfast for you on Saturday, January 29th. Visit our website for more information and to register. If you came prepared to give today, there are several different ways for you to give here at Woodbell. Head on over to our website and click on the Give button to see the six different ways you can give here at Woodville. If you are on site with us today, there are debit machines in the lobby and offering buckets as you exit the auditorium. And now, prepare your hearts for the preaching of God's Word. Well, good morning, church family. Welcome to every one of you here on site, our church family that have joined us online, and to our many first-time guests. Can we give it up right now for all of our first-time guests? We are honestly so glad that you've joined us today on site, online as a guest. And if you're here on site, on your way out, go to an exit table, friendly people. We got a coffee card for you. And also on your behalf, we're going to make a donation to the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario. Well, I trust that you're ready for God's Word. I want to take you this morning to the Old Testament, to the book of Psalm. And I want to invite you this morning to get your Bible and turn with me to Psalm 84. And I want to share with you today a message that I've entitled, When You Are in the Valley of Baca. I've never physically been to the Valley of Baca. I know it's outside of Jerusalem. But I think I've been to the Valley of Baca many times in my life, emotionally and even spiritually and uh, even mentally, I've been in the Valley of Baca. Psalm 84 was penned by, by David. And David shared a psalm about the pilgrimage that the Jewish people would do as they would make their way to Jerusalem three times of the year. They would often travel as a village. It would be a joyful time. They'd be worshiping as they go. But David pens this psalm about somebody who couldn't make the pilgrimage, couldn't make the journey to Jerusalem to go to the temple for one of the festival times of worship. Outside of Jerusalem, there actually is a valley, and it's called Baca Valley. It's the Valley of Baca. And it's mentioned in Psalm 84, verse 6. David says, as they pass through the Valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. Bible, college, Bible scholars have debated what the Valley of Baca actually was. Some actually say that it was a garbage dump. There's actually Bible scholars that believe outside of Jerusalem in those days was this low place, this valley, this garbage dump that people would have to pass through to get to Jerusalem on their pilgrimage. Most Bible scholars say that the Valley of Baca was a very dry, deserted valley. It was dry. It was filled with thorn bushes. It was a very difficult place to walk through. But they also say that in the Valley of Baca were these balsam trees, and in those days, these balsam trees each year would, would, would ooze out this sap. It would weep the sap from the tree. And the Hebrew word for baka actually means weeping. And it comes from the balsam tree that would weep its sap once a year. And so many Jewish people say when we're going through that valley of baka, it's a reminder of our difficult circumstances in life. It's a reminder of the dark places in our life. It's a reminder of the dry seasons in our life. When we're desperate, we're down, we're discouraged, and we're going through a difficult time, and we're finding life so hard. I would imagine that sitting here today on site, I would imagine there are people watching online that you're like, I've been in my personal valley of Baca. I would imagine that there's some of you today on site and some of you watching online, you're like, I'm right now in a valley of Baca. I'm discouraged. I'm feeling down. I don't know if I'm going to get through this season. I don't know if things are going to turn for the better. And you've shed tears and you've wept in your personal valley of Baca. I was in prayer in the last few weeks and I felt Holy Spirit draw me to Psalm 84. And I pulled out my pen and I just began to write some things down that I felt Holy Spirit was saying to me. 
I saw 10 things that God said to me to encourage the church with today. When you are walking through your personal valley of Baca and your place of weeping, how can we get through the season? How can we make it through the dark times? How can we make it through the difficult times when we don't feel like there's a way out? When we don't feel like healing's going to come to our body? When we don't feel like the miracle's going to come in our family? We don't feel like the restoration's going to come in our marriage? When we don't feel like we're going to get the breakthrough that we're waiting for? How can we make it through our personal valley of Baca? So if you're taking notes this morning, the first thing I want to offer to you, I, I want to challenge everyone today, number one, to have a longing deep inside of you to be in the presence of the Lord. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. In this difficult time, it's great to come together, isn't it, as a church family and worship. Anybody glad that you're here this morning to worship God together? There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. I want you to look at verse 1. David said, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. He's referring to the temple in Jerusalem. The temple in Jerusalem was the place of worship. And the Shekinah glory would often fill that ancient temple. And he said, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. Verse 2, my soul yearns, it even faints for the courts of the Lord. My soul longs for it, it even faints for it. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Can you hear, can you feel the desperation in David to be in the presence of the Lord? Verse 3, even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. I'm told that even in the ancient temple, there were times that the, that the sparrow or the swallow would find their way into the temple when the doors were open. And they would make a nest in the temple and they would give birth to their young one. And David is saying, my goodness, even the swallow, even the sparrow is in the temple. I wish that was me. I wish I could make my home in the temple. I wish I could stay in the presence of the Lord, a place near your altar. Look at verse 4. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. David is being poetic. He's talking about a longing to stay and rest in the presence of the Lord. And then later on in the psalm, you come down to verse 10. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. David was saying, I'd rather have just one day, just one day in the presence of God than a thousand days without him. I'd even rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. I'd even rather be at the door, opening the door to let people into the temple than to live and dwell in the tents of the wicked. And I want to challenge you, church, number one, have a longing for the presence of the Lord, for the manifested presence of the Lord. I know God is present at all times, but there's something about the manifested, personal presence of God, longing to be and dwell in the presence of God. What gets you through the dark times? It's the presence of God. But then there's number two, a longing to praise the Lord. And I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, don't stop praising the Lord. Praise Him through your challenge. It says in verse 4, they are ever praising you. Not sometimes, but ever. Can I challenge you to praise Him in the morning, praise Him at noon, praise Him in the evening, praise Him when you go to bed, praise Him when you're on the mountain, praise Him when you're in the valley, praise Him when you're in your Bach of situation. Praise Him at all times. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Don't let praise leave your mouth. Number two, a longing to praise. Praise the Lord. But then there's number three, a longing for that perpetual strength from the Lord. That everlasting strength from the Lord. And David pulls it out in verse 5 and verse 7. He said, blessed, which means happy, are those whose strength is in you. He's talking about a strength that comes from God. And then in verse 7, he says, they go from strength to strength. I don't know about you, but there's times I feel like I'm going from weakness to weakness. I'm going from bad to worse. But David says, go from strength to strength. And when you lean on Jesus, he's going to hold you up. Is there a witness in the house today? When you lean on Jesus, he's going to hold you up. When you're down, he's going to pick you up. When you're discouraged, he's going to give you strength. We as the people of God can go from strength to strength because our strength is in the Lord. Number three, a longing for the perpetual strength from the Lord. And then there's number four, a longing to press on in the Lord. You know what that means? Don't give up. Don't give up. Pick yourself up. Keep going. 
When you're down, get up. God will lift you up. God will give you the strength. Keep pressing on. Look at verse 5 and verse 7, the latter part of verse 5, whose hearts are set on a pilgrimage. David picks up the analogy of his village ready to go to Jerusalem to worship where they're all going together and they're pressing on in the long journey. And for some, the journey was miles upon miles upon miles upon miles. Three times a year, the village would make their way to Jerusalem. It sometimes took them at least a week to get there, but they didn't give up. I'm sure there were times the rain was coming down. I'm sure there's nights it was cold. I'm sure there was moments that there was animals, that there was criminals but they kept on pressing on. I don't know about you, but this world's not easy. Life is tough. Life is difficult, but we got to keep pressing on in our pilgrimage. We got to keep pressing on in the Lord whose hearts are set on a pilgrimage. Look at verse 7. Till each appears before God in Zion. They couldn't wait to get to Jerusalem, Zion. They couldn't wait to get into the temple where the manifested presence of God is. I'm glad Pastor Brad led us in a song about homecoming. I don't know about you, but I can't wait till I get to heaven. I can't wait till I see my Jesus face to face. I've had a number of colleagues and friends pass away unexpectedly and suddenly. My Bible college classmate, we shared a room together, 57 years of age, cancer in his body. This past summer, Evelyn and I were with he and his wife, and we were praying for healing. But somehow, in the sovereignty of God, he stepped into eternity several weeks ago. His funeral was a week ago Thursday and I'm watching online with tears in my eyes and my mind went back to when I was in Bible college when my Bible college classmate and roommate David Rutledge wrote a song from Psalm 84 and talking about his longing for the presence of God he preached the word he lived the word he spoke the word but now I can't help but think that my friend David is dancing in the presence of Jesus and I want you to know friends life is tough but heaven is real hallelujah There's There's more to this world. There's more than we have right here on earth. I'm living for eternity. I'm on a pilgrimage and so are you. We got to keep pressing on and not giving up. Someday we're going to see Jesus face to face. Someday we're going to be in heaven where there's no more sickness, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more baggage, no more challenges. We're in the presence of God Almighty. And so if we're going to make it through our valley of Baca, we got to keep pressing on. We got to fix our eyes on Jesus. Come on, church. We got to look to Jesus. We got to cling to Jesus. We got to hold on. And there's number five, a longing to pass through because of the Lord. Church, I want you to note that David says, as they pass through the valley of Baca, not as they stay in the valley of Baca, not as they remain in the valley of Baca, not as they dwell in the valley of Baca, but as they pass through the valley of Baca, I feel the Lord prophetically speaking to me. There's people right now on site and watching online. You're stuck in Baca. And the Lord is saying to you, get up, get going. He's with you. He's going to get you through your Baca situation. It's not over. It's not finished. God gets the last word. You feel stuck in Baca, but God is saying, get up, press on, move on. You're just passing through. There's weeping now, but joy comes in the morning. Somebody, somebody this morning, give a clap offering of praise to our God. God Almighty, we're passing on, we're passing through because of the Lord. But then there's number six, a longing for a perspective of blessing from the Lord. I wrote that down. We got to change our perspective. David says, as they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. Let me give you a little Hebrew understanding. Springs, the actual Hebrew word speaks of a well in that dry Baca a valley that was so dry that would have the balsam trees that would weep the sap each year. It was such a dry place and David says in a dry place dig down deep because there's some water deep down underneath the dryness. But he picks it up a little farther and he talks about the autumn rains that covers it with pools and the Hebrew word for pools is blessing. It's amazing that in the place of weeping there can be blessing. In the 
place of pain, there can be blessing. I'll tell you why. In your baka, dig deep and discover God is with you in your baka. Dig deep and discover that there's a well of spring of Holy Spirit that's going to lift your spirit in the dark. Well, come on, is there a witness in the house today? It might be difficult, but there's a spring of blessing in God that when you're in the darkest of the darkest of the desperate of the desperate, there's a well of Holy Spirit that gives you hope. Come on, is there a witness in the house today? Gives you strength, gives you encouragement. You got to learn to dig deep in God. Dig a well. Dig deep into who God is. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. I prophetically declare there's someone right now you feel like he's not faithful. God's saying to me right now, look back. He was faithful yesterday. He was faithful last year. He was faithful through your last challenge. And he will be faithful to you today. And he will be faithful to you tomorrow. Dig a well in God and see that there's a blessing. Change your perspective. Stop looking down at your problem. Look up to Jesus. Dig deep in your faith. My anchor holds in the challenge. Lord. Come on, somebody. Somebody this morning give a clap offering a praise to our God Almighty. You got to change your perspective. And then there's number seven, a longing for prayer to the Lord. Longing to pray. David said, hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. I don't know about you, but these last 21 days of prayer and fasting have been powerful. And I'm just going to tell you flat out, when I dig into the place of prayer, the devil kicks hard. Anybody understand that? The more you press into prayer, the harder the enemy will kick. It's like a spirit warfare going on. But these 21 days have been life-changing for your pastor spiritually. I can't wait for breakthrough prayer tonight, 6 o'clock. And if you're able to come on site, join on site. You can't make it on site, join online. Come as a family. Family-friendly breakthrough prayer, 6 o'clock. Prayer makes a difference. How do you get through your Baca situation? Press in in the place of prayer. Get on your knees. Call out to God. Prayer makes it. Come on, is there a witness in the house today? Prayer makes the difference. There's a longing for prayer. But then there's number eight. A longing for the promises of the Lord. Cling to the promises of the Lord. And David pulled out two promises in verse 9 and verse 11. He starts in verse 9. Look on our shield, O God. And he picks it up in verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The sun speaks of the promise of provision and the shield speaks of the protection of God. The shield is protection. The sun is provision. And some of you right now, you're like, it's raining in my life. We're not talking about the rain of the Holy Spirit. We're talking right now about the rain of discouragement. It's raining. But the sun shines. He is your provider. And I feel the Lord saying to me, he will give to you what you need right now. His grace is sufficient for today. His grace is sufficient for today. He is your provider. He will give you just what you need today. And then he will give you just what you need tomorrow. And then he will give you just what you need the next day. Ask Jesus to be your provider. Don't tell him what to give you. Ask him to give you what you need. He knows what you need more than you know. He is the sun, S-U-N, but he is the sun, S-O-N, and he is shining brightly. And he is your shield. He's not just your provider. He's your protector. He will protect you from the harm of the enemy. There is no weapon that the devil has already formed against you that's going to prosper because he is your protector. Come on, church. He provides. He protects. He's the sun and he's the shield. Cling to the promise maker and rest on the promises, longing for the promises of the Lord. But then there's number nine, a longing for the provisional favor of the Lord. And David picks up about the favor of the Lord. Verse 9, look with favor on your anointed one. It's interesting, when we read anointed one, it often points to Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. But David is referring here to the earthly king. He's referring to himself as king. Look with favor on your anointed one. And then in verse 11, the Lord bestows favor and honor. Bestows means to release Bestow means to give. Favor speaks of blessing. The Lord releases favor and honor. No good thing 
does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. I've been praying for the favor of the Lord to rest over your home, over your life, over your health, over your finances, over your marriage, over your children, over your grandchildren, over your business, over your house. I don't know about you, but I believe that there's something called the favor of the Lord. And if the word says there's no good thing that he withholds from those whose walk is blameless, the Lord wants to release his favor in this place today. This has been a tough season, but the favor of the Lord is over you right now. Amen. The favor of the Lord is surrounding you right now. You don't know about your tomorrow, but the favor of the Lord is over you. You know what that means? He is for you. He is not against you. He is not your enemy. You might have moments that you're angry at God. That's okay. But never conclude that God is angry at you. You might be mad at God, but never conclude God is mad at you. He is for you. Come on, church. He is not against you. There's something called the favor of Almighty God. Come on, right now, give a little clap offering of praise to our God Almighty. Number 10, a longing to place trust in the Lord. A longing to put all your trust in the Lord. David said, Lord Almighty, blessed is the one whose trust is in you. And I feel Holy Spirit been saying to me, especially yesterday morning as I was here praying over this, I felt the Lord remind me of something I've shared so often. It's this, if you can't trace his hand, learn to trust his heart. God can be trusted in the pain and in the difficulties and in the hard moments of life. He is worthy to be trusted. And I just want to wrap up this psalm right now. And I want to say to you how lovely is the dwelling place of our Lord God Almighty. My soul yearns, my soul faints, my soul longs to be in the presence of the Lord. Better is one day in his courts than a thousand elsewhere. I said to Pastor Brad this week, I feel a little retro throwback going through my heart right now. And some of you thought of that song that Matt Redman wrote back in 1995, Better is one day in the house of the Lord than a thousand elsewhere. Come on, church, get on your feet right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All across this place, you're at home, get on your feet. Come on, put your hands together right now. Give a loud clap offering of praise to our Lord God. Here's what I feel Holy Spirit saying to me, that he wants to take us right now into his manifested presence. God has given me feelings. God has given you emotions. And I felt Holy Spirit saying to me that there's going to be people here this morning that they're like, it's been a long time since I felt the presence of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I love when I feel the presence of the Lord. And I feel the Lord saying to me right now that He is in the house today. And he wants to do something amazing. He wants to take you through your valley of Baca. He wants to turn your mourning into dancing. He wants to let you know there's blessing in the place of weeping. He wants to let you know everything is going to be all right. Come on, is there a little amen in the house today? Come on, is there a little amen in the house today? Just lift your hands right now. I just want to pray. Then the worship team is going to lead us. Father God, I pray that the windows of heaven would open up right now. I pray, God, that there would be praise that would flow from this house this morning to you, the King of Kings. We can trust you, God. There's times I can't trace your hand, but I know I can trust your heart. Hallelujah. God, my soul fades. My soul yearns. There's a longing in my spirit right now to be in the manifested presence of you, Lord God. Better is one day in your house, God, than a thousand days elsewhere. God, I'd be happy just to be a doorkeeper in your house, just to be close to you. And God, I pray that you'd wrap your arms right now around this great church family. And I pray, God, that you would give us a Holy Ghost squeeze right now in the name of Jesus. 
I pray that you would let the house know that you love us so much. Hallelujah. So God, I pray in the midst of our Baca, in the midst of the valley of Baca, that we would lift up our hands. We would see you turn our weeping into joy. I pray that you would release favor. I pray that you would release blessing in this house today. I pray that we would be ever praising you, oh God. I pray, God, that we would look down, but we would look up in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that we would press in right now in the name of Jesus. So God, I pray, windows of heaven, open up over this place right now. I pray for everyone watching at home. Windows of heaven open up over those homes in the name of Jesus. I love you, Lord. I give you glory. Come on, church. Lift your hands and just begin to say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I really love you, Jesus. I long to be in your presence, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, pastor. Go ahead and lead us. Your dwelling place, O oh Lord Almighty, for my soul longs and even faints for you. For here my heart is satisfied. Within your presence, and I sing beneath the shadow of your ways. Come on, better is better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your court, a thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere, thousands elsewhere. One thing I ask, I would see, to see your beauty. To find you in the place your glory twills. Come on, better is one day. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts. Thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your course, thousands else. Come on, my heart and flesh cry out. My heart and flesh cry out for you, the living God. Your spirit's water to my soul. Yes, it is, Lord. I've tasted and I've seen. Come once again to me. I will draw near to you. I will draw near to you, to you. Better is one day, better is one day, better is one day than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day, better is one day, better is one day than thousands Better is one day, Lord. Better is one day. Better is one day. Better is one day. The thousands else. Come on, keep singing. Better is one day. Better is one day. Better is one day. The thousands else. Better is one day, better is one day, better is one day, a thousand elsewhere. Better is one day, better is one day, better is one day, a thousand elsewhere. 
thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your court. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your court. And thousands elsewhere. And thousands elsewhere. Do you know in the ancient Old Testament, the only place that they really felt that the presence of God dwelt is in the temple in Jerusalem. That's why David says, I long to be in your presence. Now, I'm glad to say that we don't live in the Old Testament. We live in the New Testament. I'm glad to declare that God is not just present on a Sunday morning between 9 and 10 a.m. God is present with you 24, 7, amen. And so you can be at home. The presence of God is there, amen. You could be in your car driving and the presence of God is there. And I just want to declare whatever is your valley of Baca, God is with you right now. You are just passing through. You're just on a pilgrimage. You're just on a journey. The best is yet to come. God is going to bring you through your valley of Baca. He's looking for a people that are longing for his presence. He's looking for a people that will rest on his promises. He's looking for a people that will press in and praise and praise prayer a people that would look up and say my hope is in you alone Lord so the devil's trying to keep us in the valley but I declare the devil is not in charge amen God is in charge God is saying to the house today, dig deep, dig deep, dig deep, dig deep, dig deep. There's a there's living water that flows from the heart of God. Everything's gonna be all right. It doesn't feel that way right now, but everything is gonna be all right. And I feel the Lord saying to me to say to you, when you walk out of this place today, keep praise on your lips, amen. Keep praise on your lips. Come on, Pastor. We got a few more moments. Better is one day. Better is one day. Better is one day than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day. Better is one day. Better is one day than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day. Better is one day. Better is one day than thousands elsewhere. about or as close just a couple of moments the service is going to close God's not finished yet there's two things that I feel the Lord just prompted me to do number one something we do every Sunday you're in sight or you're watching online today was the day that you stepped into eternity you know that 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 you're ready for heaven was there a time was there a place was there a moment that you said yes to Jesus if you're uncertain today if you're not sure if you've never asked Jesus in your life I'd have no greater joy than to lead you in this prayer I'm gonna do that right now on site online if you've never asked Jesus into your life but you'd like to today you want to be ready for eternity you want to be ready for heaven I want to lead you in this prayer and we're going to join you as you pray let's pray together dear Jesus come into my life forgive me of my sins I make my peace with you today today I confess you 
It's my Savior and my Lord. I pray it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you open your eyes right now, church? Can we take a moment and celebrate salvation? If that's you today, you made the best decision of your life on site, online. And if you don't attend a life-giving, Bible-believing church, honestly, we'd be honored if you join us in the journey. You're on site, on your way out, drop by an exit table. We've got a Bible for you. It's free. They're going to tell you how we can help you in your new faith journey. You're watching online. Reach out on the chat, and we will reach back to you. If you live somewhere around the world or across Canada, we're going to help you find a Bible-believing church in your area. You need a church family that you can connect with. But before we close, I'm going to ask if every head would be bowed, everyone's eyes would be closed. I feel Holy Spirit speaking to me very intentionally about this. And as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I felt the Lord say to me that there would be many people this morning that feel like they are in their personal valley of Baca. And it's hard. It's not easy. It's their place of pain. It's their place of hurt. It's your place of difficulty. I, I, I'm going to ask you to do something this morning. I really wish I could open this altar this morning. I can't wait for the day soon when we can just bring you right to the front. But as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I felt Holy Spirit say to me, Mark, before you close this service, get them to raise their hand and pray for God would turn their valley of Baca into a mountain of blessing. And so heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you right now feel like you are right now in your personal valley of Baca, just lift your hands right now. I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray that God would turn your valley of Baca into a mountain of blessing. That's what my God does. So God, there's hands lifted all across this place. There's hands lifted at homes all across this city. And God, I pray that you would, you would take the valley of Baca that we're in and you would turn it into a mountain of blessing in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you would flood these people with hope, encouragement. I pray breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I pray miracle in the name of Jesus. I pray, mighty God, that you would encourage everyone whose hands are lifted right now and I pray that you would step into our place of weeping and turn our mourning into dancing in the name of Jesus. I pray God that you would take us through that valley of, of difficulty and put us on the mountain of victory in the name of Jesus. I pray God that we would say better it's one day in your house than a thousand days elsewhere. I pray that the manifested presence of you God Almighty would go with these wonderful people today and this week and now God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. We give you the glory, the honor, the praise in the name of Jesus. Come on, give a shout of praise to the Lord God in this place today. He's worthy. He's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all praise. I, I just want to challenge you this week. Read Psalm 84 and read it again and read it again, and read it again. Get it in your spirit, and God's gonna bring you through your valley of Baca. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I hope you can join us tonight. If you can't join on site, join us online. Breakthrough prayer, end of 21 days of prayer and fasting. If you'd like personal prayer this morning, in just a couple of moments when the service ends, come and stand on one of these lines. Someone on our prayer team will come to you. If you've come prepared to give of your tithes and offerings, there are offering buckets at the back, debit machines in the lobby. Go on our church website to see other ways to give. Can we one more time give it up for our first time guests? Come on, yeah! The guests, drop by an exit table. We really want to bless you. And moms and dads, when you're picking up your children this morning, thank those amazing children's pastors and children's workers. They're doing amazing. God bless you. Evelyn and I love you so much. And we can't wait to see you tonight. Have a great afternoon and an amazing week. God bless you.